Today we're on Cane Creek. It's a demonstration farm that the Beetle County Conservation District owns and has for about 25 years now. And it's really, uh, it's really kind of a work in progress. It's something that um, we do a lot with partners on and it's a great example of what you can accomplish with like-minded partners. Well, this land was put back into grass many years ago and uh, has created an opportunity for the conservation district to kind of showcase uh, for the public the uh, different types of grazing management that can be conducted in, in eastern South Dakota. They actually have fenced the property and, and watered it and, and there's three different types of grazing rotations that, that are applied here um, with a single cooperator. We've got uh, part of the ground that is grazed um, by our operator, Shad Larson, is Fish, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service ground. And, um, you know, they've got a goal of, you know, increasing wildlife habitat and plant diversity. And, you know, we've got a goal of increasing organic matter in our soils, um, increasing our grass production and, you know, better grazing for livestock, uh, maybe the opportunity to have more grass and more cattle. You know, it's, it's kind of the, the goal for most producers. When the Conservation District first got it, we said, we're going to do the best we can with it. We're going to put it back into grass, leave it into grass, and we're going to let the public put it back into private hands. This project just evolved. It just became something on itself, on itself, on itself. It's an educational tool. It's we learn something from it every single year. They have a deferred rotational grazing. They have management intensive grazing and they also exercise rest rotation. They have many objectives. Some of them are to increase soil organic matter. You know, after being farmed for a number of years, the soil was kind of, kind of beat down. Through putting it back to grass and, and implementing rotational grazing and, and leaving more biomass on the soil at the end of the year, we're slowly and steadily increasing that organic matter in that soil and, and we're testing that and we're monitor, monitoring that over time. Back to some of the partnerships that we, we have work out here. Um, like I mentioned, Fish and Wildlife Service, the Conservation District, Natural Resources Conservation Service. Um, we've got a couple operators. We've got uh, Shad that operates the, the livestock out here. And um, we've got an operator, uh, Del Ochsner, that operates a couple of small crop demonstration areas. Uh, the crop areas were pretty beat up by uh, former management, heavy tillage and low crop diversity. And we have one area that um, was highly affected by salts or was saline affected. And um, with that being a resource concern identified by the conservation district, we thought it'd be a good demonstration area since those salinity areas are pretty prevalent here throughout the James River Valley in South Dakota. And so we seeded it back to a, a perennial mixture of a salt tolerant alfalfa and then um, uh, kind of a hybrid salt tolerant uh, wheatgrass. And we've had really good luck. We've restored those areas. We've drugged the salts back down lower in the profile where they belong. Um, there's still a little bit of work to do as far as taking those salts lower back down the profile, but um, it's a, just a way to show that you can still have those acres be productive. King Creek is uh, really beneficial because it's, it's a place where we can bring uh, a producer who is interested in maybe uh, diversifying their ro rotation or creating some type of a rotation. We can bring them out here and, then, and show them um, this management intensive system where we have small paddocks and high stock density and, and they can actually see what it looks like when you put uh, 90 head of cattle on, on 10 acres for 24 hours. They can see what that looks like. Come back 40 days later and, and see the regrowth that comes from that and the response of the grass through that recovery period. I can't say enough good about this land. This was the first pasture that Dad and I have ever introduced a rotating. And to introduce that into our operations, that was kind of an eye-opener for my father. 
because he was one of them, old school. You just turn them out, they'll do their thing. It took him a few years to catch on because I'd turn out the same time kind of around dad did, and my calves would always come home bigger because the weaning weight as far as rotational grazing is just phenomenal. Now there's a hundred head of cows out there with calves and four bulls. You can't tell they're out there. They're doing the job, they're putting on the weight, they're taking care of the land, and it's a working land situation. And it's an educational tool. And the, sometimes the best way you can help people is just to show them 